are you normal and the love freshman students from the BS EMT. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss the science, technology, and nation building, part 2. So sit back, listen, and enjoy learning. And these are the learning outcomes for today's discussion. At the end of the lesson, the student should able to describe the indigenous science and technology in the Philippines. Second, familiarize with our national scientists and their inventions and contributions to their society. Lastly, analyze the development of science education in the Philippines. Alright, so let's fasten our seatbelt as we trace back the role of science and technology in nation building. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. talk about indigenous science and technology in the Philippines. Indigenous knowledge system can be broadly defined as a system that deals with the knowledge that an indigenous or native or local community has been accumulated over generations of living in a particular environment. It is a broad system that is unique to a particular culture and passed down from generation to generation. In 2000 states that indigenous knowledge is something that has to be with origin, having originated in and being produced, growing, living, or occurring naturally in a particular region or environment. Also, Kagli in 1996 emphasizes that indigenous knowledge is a product of human ingenuity, creativity, and inventiveness in defining the world. This knowledge has been installed deeply in the minds of the native people as they thrive in their relative remote yet self-sufficient local communities. This is a relief in their activities, oral communication, songs, folk, or folk tales, and rituals. Now let's define indigenous science. This is refers to traditional science knowledge that includes practices belief and expertise handed down through generation of indigenous people by culture transmission. Indigenous science and its achievement took place in the workroom of the artisans, in the field or farm of the farmers, in the mountains of the hunters, in the sea of the fishermen, in the concept of place value system, the decimal system of the Hindu astronomers, and so on. In their desire to live a good and peaceful life, they use this vast order of knowledge as their guide in planning and decision making, in adaptation and resolution of tension over natural resources, uses as well as in their interactions with one another and with their environment. The science of a given culture is its indigenous science according to Ugawa in 1995, which includes traditional medicine, predicting weather, midwifery, celestial navigation, selecting seed and types of soil for planting, and among others. Like modern science, indigenous science uses science process skills guided by a positive attitudes and values. Indigenous people manifest their process skills in their daily work by communicating, identifying, observing, measuring, testing, comparing, contrasting, classifying, predicting, recording, making conclusions, and evaluating. Here are some instances. First is on predicting weather. During New Year, careful observation is done such that when the cow or horse eats grass, it meant drought. When the goats repeatedly wail, it meant landslide. Second is on treating sickness. Herbolarius observed the condition of the patient, then follow a procedure in mixing ingredients, 
usually particular herb plants and oil or water of medicine for the sick. Third is on preserving food. Bagoong making employs the appropriate portion of salt and fish. Fishes and meat are dried under the sun. Example is our dying. Tropical fruits are classified and selected then converted into wine and or vinegar by fermentation process. Example is the tapi. We also have on farming. Different types of soil seeds and tools for planting are selected and classified based on the cultural properties, adaptation, and upland cultivation practices, following soil and water conservation principle. And of course, you also have on building houses. Planning focuses on the type of structure to put up, like for example, is mud house, nipa house, stilt house, and the location or area for the construction it can be in the hillside or even in the water the time of construction it can be dry season or wet season in a month building materials are carefully selected counted and measured it can be kugon bamboo and many more tools are classified and classified as well as prepared and improve hammer and mallet knife bolo as well as rope and we also have on fishing Fishermen have placed the condition of their fishing vessels and of the sea. They study the position and brightness of the stars, and they even select and classify their fishing tools. They decide on the appropriate time to go out of the sea. We are already done discussing the indigenous knowledge and indigenous science. Now, Let's talk about indigenous technology. What is indigenous technology? Alright, it is refers to the traditional art, craft, tools, technique, processes that are used by indigenous people to adapt their environment for whatever purposes that serve them. For example, the bow and arrow for hunting, sticks and spear for fishing, horseback riding, making canals for irrigation, ship building technology, textile techniques, food processing, using herbs and coconut oil in treating illness, building houses using mud, which had natural insulating qualities that kept the native folks cool in summer and warm in cold weather, nomadic pastoral system of land and water use, method of extracting medicine from herbs, mining, as well as weaving. Now, let's deal with the indigenous science and technology in the Philippines. The early Filipinos had their own share of indigenous knowledge and skills that were accumulated and developed out of necessities. Their knowledge about biodiversity, ecosystem, and changes in climatic patterns may vary or may be similar among different indigenous groups. The indigenous tribes had costume and traditional that reflect their deep respect to the law of the environment and have benefited from it immensely. Verses of the traditional Etas were skilled in weaving and plaiting, wore wrap around skirt or bark cloth for women, and loan cloth for men. Only men made armlets. They also produce raincoats made of palm leaves, whose topmost part spread like a fan to protect the body. They were also into music and the art, making use of ornaments as accessories and the assembles of instruments to create melodious rhythms is the farming system of the Ifugos in the Cordillera Mountain associated of the Paya or the rice terraces and the Moyang and the Uma known as the Sweden. The Paya or rice terraces were carved into the mountains with deep concave slope and were supported by an ancient irrigation system from the rainforest above the terraces. Wedding and patching of holes 
were done to lessen water leakage. Terraces were formed from the late July to late November to sustain and prolong productivity. The sloping nature of up upland landscape requires soil and water conservation technology. This is done by constructing embankment walls and water impounding system. The embankment walls were repaired and cleaned in on November to December. Sewing was done by the women in December to January. Rice planting season was from February to March. Harvesting season took place from June to July. Rituals were performed during the various stages of farming that required killing chickens as a form of sacrifice. While waiting for the rice harvest season, the Ifugos work in their Uma. The Uma farming, also known as shifting cultivation, refers to the rotation farming technique in which land is cleared for cultivation normally by cutting down the trees and other vegetation, drying them, then burning them. Burning was considered practical and inexpensive means of preparing the soil for cultivation. The ashes of the burnt trees and vegetation improve the fertility of the soil. The most common crop planted in the Uma was sweet potato or camote and legumes. Uma farming took place from March to June along with the maintenance of the growing rice crops. Uyong or Pinugo system was coined from the local form dialect meaning forest or woodlot. The Moyong system was a forest watershed management practices of the Ifugaos. According to Mikawi in 1982, he reported that a typical Moyong considered or consisted of a few hundred square meters to about 5 hectares. In addition, Clark and Tindungan in 1995 discover, or discovered that in mountain Umayao, the second highest peak in Ifugao, the standard Moyong woodlot range from 0.6 to 2.4 hectare. The Moyong was storehouse of both flora and fauna. An investigation conducted by Rondolo in 2001 founded that the Moyong contained 262 species, mainly indigenous, belonging to 71 plant families. The Moyong supply year-round water to the Payo rice terraces. The Moyong system has been recognized internationally as an ideal forest management strategy. In a study titled Towards Understanding Peoples of the Cordillera, Bautic and Nidlo in 2003 were cited saying that Moyong played an important role of providing fuel wood, construction material, food and medicines. The same study cited in Serrano and Kadawing in 1982 who reported that the Ifugaos used wood derived from the Moyongs for craving or carving religious relics like bulul, the Ifugao's rice god, household utensils, and artistic figurines. Another indigenous knowledge of the Ifugao was about or about their idea that planting and sowing of crop seeds trees must be coordinated according to the phases of the moon. This means that the planting would be productive when the moon undergoes its different phases. The absence of the moon would mean planting not be productive. Some bot botanists expressed that the scientific basis of this indigenous idea is the gravitational pull of the moon that affects the flow of fluid in the plants as the moon changes its phase in the same way that it affects the sea tides.
and they will also have the tinguyans of Obra, who also practice Uma system of farming. Rice and corn were the primary crops. The rice puddles were located in the lower part of the mountain ranges, near the river where water for irrigation was abundant. Umas, on the other hand, were located in the upper high portions. Rice planted in the umas need less water and are usually just rain-fed. Besides farming, the Tinguyans also developed techniques and created tools for hunting and fishing. They engage in the anuk or hunting, usually in a group for bakus or monkey, alingo or wild pig, hugsa or deer, and wild chicken. Men and women also went to the river to kalap or gather fish, eel, and shellfish. And they will also have the domagats of Isabel found multiple use of their forests for medicine, for provision of food and shelter, and for resources necessary for trade. They tended their within or Sweden in the forest during the Habagat season or rainy months of May to August, while allowing the marine fishes to lay eggs and multiply in times of the next fishing season. Of course, we also have the indigenous people of Tublai Binget observe natural health practices by using herbal botanical plant for medicine. For instance, they fry and pulverize red ant, which they call as agiyawan, to relieve a toothache. They also pulverize and dry coconut shells to treat wounds and particularly the newly circumcised. They use kigis, guaba shoots, sap sap shoot for wound and kugon grass root for kidney problems. They also use urine and disinfection or disinfectant to open wounds. The craftsmanship, creativity, and innovativeness of the indigenous Filipino were exhibited in the kind of weapon they made and used. In the southern Philippines, the banabas, short for pangtabas, meaning chopper, a large forward curb single edge blunt sword was used for combat weapon, for agricultural purposes, and for display of power. Now, let's get to know the different panabas of the Southern Philippines. First is of the indigenous Batangenius, made use of the balisong, fan knife, butterfly knife, or batangas knife, a folding packet knife. Second is the tausug of Sulu, used barong or burong, a short sword with a leaf-shaped blade. And we also have the Maranao, male and female carried and juice, gunong or punyal, a small crease and as trusting weapon against their enemies in the close quarter fighting. The Burus of Sulu as well as the Maguindanao and Maranaos of Mindanao use the Kampilan or Talibong by the Kapangpangan, a long dual pointed sword with a carved hilt and was considered the national weapon of the Moros of Sulu and Mindanao. It was used in the first line of defense. It was also used in Visayas and in Luzon. It is interesting to know that the King Lapu-Lapu of Mactan used a Kampilan in battle. The Kampilan was also mentioned in the ancient Filipino epics such as the Hiligay Hiligaynon, Hinilawud, and the Ilocano the Tinguyans use Gayang, or also known as a spear, and Gaman, we call it Machete, as weapons in tribal war. In terms of the structure, technology, the Igorot built fort made of stone walls 
and average several meters in width and about 2 to 3 times in the width in height around 2000 before Christ. Meanwhile, the Evatans of Batanes built their fortress known as the Idyangs, made of limestone and coral and with a kogun grass roofing on hills to protect themselves during times of war and against bad weather condition. The Maranao traditional house of the Datu or Sultan was called Turogan, meaning resting place or sleeping place. It was elevated above the ground by columns cut from trees of huge girth. The interior had no partition. Traditionally, the Tinguyans built single room houses with the timber and bamboo roofed with panau or kugun grass harvest or harvested from the nearby forest. Houses were built with a large and elevated floor area manually pounded and hardened with the large wood block. The walls were made up of the wood and bamboos and house foundation were long solid wood called lipit. While the Samals built their houses on the stilts over the water along the shore or farther out, the Bajaos live either in their boats or on stilts too, as they adapted to the fishing economy. Due to their nomadic ways of living, the Aites had portable and disposable shelter, which was constructed along the principle of tripod using branches and palm fronts. This kind of house was simply put up and then left behind and folded and carried as they moved from one place to one other hunting for food. And then we also have the Higaununs of Agusan and Misamis Oriental build their three houses made of lanchet, sapling, nipa or kukun grass, split, bamboo, rattan and barks of trees. This type of structure was built as a defense against enemy attacks. And lastly we had the Maddayas or Mindanao. Houses were built of careful selected bamboos. Its elevated floor line served as a safety measure against attack from enemies. The Filipino indigenous tribes love music. They made their own musical instruments. For instance, the Kudyapi, a two-string fitted boat lute, was the only string instrument among the Visayas, the Maranaos, and the Bonobos. Carved out of the solid soft wood, it had nine frets made of hardened bivouacs. Let's get to know more about the other instrument made by our indigenous natives. First is the instrument palendag or also known as the bamboo flute. Was also called as pulala by the manubus and mansakas palandag by the magubus, pulala by the bukidnons and lumundeg by the ponuens. It was the largest bamboo flute used by the Bagindanuans. According to the Mercurio in 2006, the Palindag were used as the Magindanons for inmate gathering for family in the evening. And they will also have the Gumabang Kayu or wooden Gumbang was a xylophone like instrument used among the people in the southern Philippines, a largely obsolete instrument. The Gubang Gangsa was made with the metal bars. The Maguindanawans used Gandingan was a set of four large hanging gongs as part of their Kulintang in ensembles. When played solo, the Gandingan allowed the fellow Maguindawans to communicate with each other, allowing them to send message or warning via 
long distances. The craftsmanship and ingenuity of the early Filipinos were also shown in terms of transportation, besides walking and the use of animals such as horses and carabos. They built the Balangay, the first wooden kind of sailboat for fishing and for trading activities. For instance, the, the Ibanags used Balangay as a means to get food from the Cagayan River or for trade activities with neighboring ethnic communities. Also, Butuan Fox called Balangay Butuan Boat and used it for cargo and trading purposes. Meanwhile, the Caracal was used by the Kapangpangan and Visayas people during seasonal sea raids. The indigenous Bajaus and Tausug living in Mindanao used their own traditional boat known as the Vinta, locally known as the Lepa Lepa or Sakayan. In terms of astronomy, the indigenous Filipino were attentively observant of the position and movement of heavenly bodies such as the constellation, the stars, the faces of moon. To them, these bodies and other matters around them are relevant to their ways of life. For instance, the changes in the faces of moon had something to do with the changes of time and the season. The communities took sign from this as their guide in performing their social duties and econo economic activities like the right time and season for planting rice, for fishing, for harvesting, for hunting, and many more. They could predict the weather condition simply by observing the formation of the clouds and the behavior of animals. In a scholarly article, Balatik, Ethnoastronomia, Kalangitan at Kabihas ng Filipino, Dante Ambrosio in 2005, father of the Philippine Ethnoastronomy, mentioned that the Bukidnon had a star named Marara, known as one of the signaling cloudy weather during the planting season, that the Ibuloy people of Palawan and Bagubo tribe considered Balatic, a constellation of perfectly aligned and evenly spaced stars as a sign to foretell the beginning of the Kaingin period and the time for planting. Baro Ambrosio in 2005 said that the indigenous Filipino also observed a constellation or a group of star named Murupuro, also known as the Mapulon by the Tagalog, San Ampon by the Ibuloy, and Kufu Kufu by the Ted Turai. To determine the changing of time and season, Marupuru was connected to the sea navigation and like Balatik, it signaled the beginning of the planting season. Furthermore, in Bicol, there were other stars such as Pugut, used as the sign of fish and incoming storm, Saag, four stars that resemble a four-sided figure, which signals the beginning of the night time, and Turong, other all stars the Filipino that indigenous science storm. and technology deserve recognition and acceptance. The discovery and awareness of the existence of the 4,000 of years have been given rise to the many different assumptions and theories. But nonetheless, they continued to fascinate people in the modern day. The good attitudes and values that they brought forth in the inductive of human needs to protect and preserve them for future generations. Alright, so let's get to know the great Filipino scientists and inventors. The Philippines take pride in producing research and development leaders, scientists, and innovators whose discoveries and inventions have contributed to the improvement of human life, thanks to their decades of science technology-based studies. With unwavering perseverance and true collaboration projects, 
across different disciplines, they found ways to address human needs that benefit society in the long run. Great Filipino scientists and innovators are awarded the rank and the title of Order of the National Scientists by the President of the Philippines. The National Academy of Science and Technology, which was created by the virtue of the Presidential Decree No. 1003 and 1003-A on December 16, 1976, has been tasked to recommend a maximum of 10 scientists annually to the President of the Philippines for conferment of the rank and title of Order of the National Scientists. The title was elevated to the Order of the National Scientists in 2003 by the Virtue Executive Order No. 236 Series of 2003. Class, for you, what is a scientist? Or, how do you consider the person to be a scientist? Alright, scientist is an individual who has earned a doctoral degree in any field in science and has demonstrated and earned distinction in dependent research or significant innovative achievement in the basic and applied sciences, including agricultural, engineering and medical sciences, in mathematics, and in the social sciences, manifested by published work in recognized scientific and technical journals according to the Presidential Decree number 1003-A. Now let's get to know our national scientists. But before that, can you name a Filipino scientist? None? Now, it's high time for us to be familiarized with our very now, own national these scientists. These are our national scientists in 2014. Here are a list. First, of the Filipino Alcala national scientists in the field of biological of 2014. science. We also they were recognized the for their scientific and technological the achievements in their respective Barbas. fields of specialization. Now, these are our national scientists in 2014. First, we have Angel Alcala in the field of biological science. We also have in the field of horticulture and the person of Ramon Barba. And then we also have in marine biology in the persons of Edgardo Gomez. And then we also and have our national, national scientists in 2010 to 2011. Let's start in 2010. We have Raul Fabelia in the field of economics. We also have Benvenido Nebres Jr. in the field of plant breeding. And in 2010, we have Ernest Domingo in the field of internal medicine or gastroenterology. And lastly, we have Merces Conception in the field of demography. And then we also have our national scientists in 1998 to 2008, starting with Lourdes Cruz in the field of biochemistry. We also have Chudolo Capucho, Jr. in the field of veterinary medicine. And of course, we also have Onofre Corpus in the field of political, economics, and government. And then we have Benito Vergara in the field of plant physiology. And then we also have Claire Baltazar in the field of systematic entomology. And in 2000, we have Benvenido Giuliano in the field of biochemistry. And we also have in 1999, in the person of Gelia T. Castillo in the field of rural sociology and then we also have in 1998 in the person of Dolores Ramirez in the field of biochemistry genetics and 
Scientology. He's still held on the list of the National Scientists from 1978 to 1998. Starting in the year of 1994, in the persons of Clara Lim Lianco in the field of biochemistry and organic chemistry. We also have Pedro Escoro in the field of genetics and plant breeding. We also have in 1981 or 89 in the person of Paulo Campos in the field of nuclear medicine. And we also have one in 1988 in the person of Alfredo Lagmay in the field of experimental psychology. And then we also have in 1987 in the person of Luz Olivaros Miliardo in the field of phytochemistry. And in 1986 there are two scientists in the persons of Discoro L. Umali in the field of agriculture and rural development. And we have Julian Banzon in the field of chemistry. We still have on the table in the persons of Hilario Lara in the field of public health. We also have Incarnacion Alzono or Alzona in the field of Philippine history. And we also have Teodoro Agoncillo in the field of Philippine history that is in the year 1985. And then in 1983, we have the following scientists. We have Francisco Santos in the field of human nutrition and agricultural chemistry. And we also have Carmen Velasquez in the field of parasitology. And then in 1982, there were three scientists, the persons of Geminano de Ocampo in the field of ophthalmology. And we also have Casimito del Rosario in the field of physics, astronomy, and meteorology. And then we also have Gregorio Velasquez in the field of phycology. And then in 1980, we have Eduardo Cusambin in the field of plant taxonomy, systematics, and morphology. And in 1978, we have Gregorio Waizara in the field of engineering and inventions. We also have Alfredo Santos in the field of physical chemistry. And lastly, we have Juan Salcedo Jr. in the field of nutrition and public health. Now, Let's proceed to the great Filipino inventors and their contributions. Starting with Lucelle Abad, developed a plant vitamins, an effective plant growth, and promoter using irrigated seaweeds. Second, we have Philip Alviola, helped develop methods to monitor biodiversity in protected areas. He's been studying mammals, the diversity of cave dwelling bats and bats viruses. Thirdly, we have Alma Arboleras invented the EBAS or also known as Intelligent Bus Utility System. We still have on the list Justado Benato designed the first single chips or 16-bit microprocessor based calculator also known as 1976 TMS 9900 by Texas Instruments. He also pioneered GUI or Graphic User Interface. He also have Accelerator in 1990. He also contributed to design the 10 Mbit Ethernet CMOS. And of course, we also have Rodolfo Biasca Sr. Invented Iron Man, Car Ionizer, Nature's Air Room Ionizer, Super Frame Charwood Stew and Briggs Cole. In the sixth, we have Techi Cruz Capellian, founded the Philippine Solar Power Alliance. On the seventh, we have Mark Leonaz, invented the one chip video camera. And then 
still have Isa Mihena, co-founded Sustainable Alternative Lightning, a social enterprise that is developing a lead lamp that runs just a table, salt, and water. Still on the list, we have Quirino O. Navarro, determined the nuclear properties in the isotopes of Californium, Einsteinium, and Dyspronium using cryogenic technique. And of course, we also have Roberto del Rosario, invented the karaoke or previously called as minus one in 1975. He also invented the OMB or one man band piano, as well as the voice color tape and voice color code, the piano tuner guide, and the piano keyboard stressing device, and the copper Y or white string winding machine. And this led to the passage of the Republic Act 7459, also known as the Inventor and Invention Incentive Act of 1992. Still on the list, we have Cesar Saloma, led to the development of the merit and of, of course, generating also high have contrast two female images of the semiconductor in the name of Michelle Grace Palazzo and Rachel Gale Power induced car identified the biomakers of pollutants affecting the Philippine freshwater system. Microscopy. A biomaker is a measurable substance in an organism whose presence is indicative of some phenomenon such as disease, infection, or environmental exposure. Also, Julius Sempio, specialist in geoinformatics and remote sensing. He is helping develop an effective archive and database for images coming from the Watawan, a Philippine microsatellite launch into orbit, and a future Diwata 2 for applications such as mapping, monitoring, and environmental and detecting changes in the land features and land usage. Then we have Gregorio Zara, invented Earth Induction Compass in 1929. We also have invented alcohol-fueled airplane in 1950. On the list, we have Cesar as well as the semi-automatic propeller making the machine to generate high contrast. He also invented of the Vigil semiconductor site TV by a one photo optical beam induced current as imaging well as the solar water heater or solar show reflectance and solar stove, solar battery, thermosolar energy machine in 1961, drinking glass, vapor chamber in 1962, discover also the Zara effect, the law of kinetic electrical resistance. First, on the list is a 3-in-1-5 truck invented by Alfredo M. Ano Sr., who is also known as the godfather of Filipino inventors. He invented the 3-in-1 far truck and named it as Patriot because of its triple capabilities such as far truck, as a rescue vehicle, and as an ambulance. Second in our list is the Salamander Amphibious Tricycle, created by Athoy Lave. This type of tricycle can seat six people on land and four in water. It is powered by a 5 kilowatts electric engine or a 250cc gasoline motor. Third in our list is the Water Gasoline, also known as Dazo Water Fuel Hydrogen. Invented by Noli Dazo, the Dazo water fuel hydrogen is used to run a motor vehicle. This invention made Dazo an outstanding Filipino inventor of the Philippines in the field of innovative product inventions. Fourth in the list is the Hymax Turbo Power Simulator was invented by Junior Jesus, an electrical and electronic technician 
who claims that the Hymax turbo power simulator works converts atmospheric air into ozone and hydrogen or nitrous oxide before it enters to the engine to enhance fuel burning efficiency. It allows the car to run faster with less fuel consumption. Sixth in our list is the mosquito larvicide. This substance was developed by Christian On the R. seventh Herbosa. is the group perforated calcium hydroxide. This is an upgrade for the current light, motorcycle perforated mosquito larvae that can be installed without altering the, the engine's internal mosquitos. mechanism. It produces less greenhouse effects, faster throttle response, faster Reeving engine and less fueling up spark plug. This is the invention of Rommel B. Bernardo. Eight in our list is the Green Echo Toilet System, invented by Daniel Camacho. This is the, the kind of pipe the cylinder mounted on the unit, also known as it the Pinoy Jack Hammer, because it recycles and was invented by Joel C. Miguel or wastewater this from showers tool and provides directly with chaso. It it is environmentally friendly. It does not require electricity or fuel to function. Top in our release is the portable smart surface system. This is an electronic sensor. A system that converts virtually any flat surface in an interactive interface. It is used for interactive learning environment. This invention won a gold medal in the 46th International Exhibition of Inventions Genova in Switzerland. This smart surface system project was led by Dr. Nestor Michael Tiglau and computer engineering alumnus Charles Kevin Verdad. Sixth in our list is the mosquito larvicide. This substance was developed by Christian R. Herboza. It contains calcium hydroxide and clinoptiloplite that kills mosquito larvae and controls the growth and spread of dengue carrying mosquitoes. We also have the e-jeepney. The modern electronic jeepney or also known as the e-jeepney is now finally being used in Metro Manila and in Bacolod City. The e-jeepneys are noiseless and smokeless since they use electricity. We also have Hydro Gasifer, created by Robert V. Sellis. This invention uses water as a supplemental fuel for most engine type. It uses exhaust gases from the engine to separate water into hydrogen and oxygen, which enters the combustion chamber to burn the fuel that is in the tank. It lowers carbon emissions or pollutants releases in the air. Lastly, we have the eBus or Intelligent Bus Utility System. It's a traffic invention system that allows buses to do the following. First, load and unload only their designated area. Two, use real-time location system to track buses' time of departure and arrival. Third, lessen bus stoppage duration. Fourth, Customize bus doors to open and close only in the allocated des designation. And lastly, trace and monitor buses via machine readable tags. This invention won the gold medal for consumer category at the prestigious 11th British Invention Awards in London in 2011. 
for outstanding contribution and application of innovation for the public sector transportation system. The IBAS was invented by Alma Alborenas and Rodel D. Guzman. We are down to the last part of our discussion, which is the science education in the Philippines. Education is the process of transmitting knowledge, skills, values, and behaviors to the young to prepare them to become responsible, self-resilient, independent, and productive members of the society. Science education is the field concerned with the sharing science content, processes, and pedagogy. Science education is relevant not only to adults but more particularly to the students' lives. Science education cultivates student curiosity about the world and enhances their scientific thinking. It inculcates them infinite scientific concepts as they grow up. They need to become scientifically and technologically literate in order to succeed. Teaching them the scientific method is teaching them how to think, learn, solve problems, and make informed decisions. These skills are integrated in the growth and development throughout their schooling. In short, science education engages them in the science and in every aspect of their education and life from school to career. Through the investigative activities, students learn and understand general truths or the operation of general laws and obtain from the scientific method. They develop process skills like planning, measuring, observing, analyzing, designing, fabricating, evaluating, and examining evidences. Science education prepares them to become independent, critical thinkers, and effective contributors to the following. Shared concerns to make up the good life. Another is innovative and creative solutions to contemporary issues or problems. And lastly, scientific and technological projects and activities for the preservation and protection of life and the environment. Overall, science education enables students to become partners of the government in confronting the realities brought about by science and technology in the society. The years followed paved the way to more relevant in the science education. In 1964, the Philippine Science High School System, a specialist government high school program, was established by the virtue of Republic Act 3661 to develop young Filipinos through advanced science and technology curriculum. Since then, the Philippine Science High School continues to offer scholarship to students gifted in science and mathematics. After high school, the scholars are obligated to pursue bachelor's degree in science, mathematics, or engineering. Through the Philippine Science High School, the country have more future scientists, technologists, and innovators. At present, the Philippine Science High School curriculum is revised and realigned to the K-12 program, a timely and relevant action in light of recent developments such as the ASEAN 2015. Among the changes in the introduction of the course on the patenting and intellectual property rights and a course on entrepreneurship to better equip the graduates for their future roles as leaders, experts, and workers in the growing knowledge economy. These are the K-12 significant changes. In 2002, we have the Basic Education Curriculum, and we also have the Revised Basic Education Curriculum, that also puts emphasis on the interactive learning approaches and integrative teaching approaches which integrate com competencies and values within and across the learning areas. But on this curriculum, it is more on the teacher-centered approach than the student interaction or engagement. 
and then we have in 2010 the SEC or the UBD model which provides a personalized or personalized approach using special curriculum programs likewise develop readiness and passion for work and lifelong learning moreover it takes into consideration the various contexts and support system surrounding the Filipino learners however the UBD model has a very high standard in achieving uh, scores and then we have the K-12 considers every aspect of development of the learners so that the graduates will be holistically developed equipped with the 21st century skills and prepared for employment entrepreneurship middle level skills or higher education all right so this is the end of our discussion but let me leave you with this quotation science and technology revolutionize our lives but memory tradition and mid frame our response according to Arthur Schlesinger. And these are the reference that I may use for this topic. Alright, so that's the end of our presentation. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have learned something to this topic. Now, I have a bonus point for you. If you can answer this on the comment section, you will gain 10 points credit for your class attending. Now here is the question. How do you view K-12 program of education? A burden or a help? Again, how do you view the K-12 program of education? A burden or a help? Explain your answer in not more than 3 sentences. Alright, see your answers in the comment section below. Good luck! Thank you for learning with me today. But please, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe. See you on the next video.